You're fantastic, darling. Enough teasing? Oh, just enough. And uh, I wasn't too rough, was I? <laughs> you always know just how far to go. And how'd you like your hair? Huh? <laughs> Marvelous as always. <laughs> Have you been out? But don't you remember we had a luncheon date? Something came up. Always something comes up. Can't you just listen once? Do you think she knows? Mm, who cares? <laughs> Such a bad girl. <laughs> oh, mother's daughter. So, when can I see you? Uh, what about Thursday? Great. Call the shop. Make an appointment. You're a half hour late. I have my hands full. I've been hearing rumors. Lies, June. Just lies. You're the only woman I love. This is not about other women. They don't mean a thing. You know what I'm talking about. The only thing I know is I love you. That's my wife again, and you're dead. Excuse me. You mind tossing me my... My bag. crystal ball today, eh? Romeo, mm. I am very concerned. Oh. I had a dream about you. You were in the desert. A storm was raging. You found shelter in an ancient pyramid. But never came out. Oh, wow. Well, thanks a lot. I'll cancel my trip to Palm Springs.
fix you right up. Well, Ted Reed, that your turtle soup, you know how much I hate this. It's always worked before. No, it did. I poured it at the plants, but Henry wasn't looking. What? And the plants always died. Bless you. Thank you. Tissues. Keep one in your car and one in your pocket. I could take care of myself. If you took care of yourself, you wouldn't have a cold. Chief Burke. Vitamin C. Take 2,000 milligrams twice a day. You guys are like a bad sitcom. All right, we're on our way. A beauty salon on Rodeo Drive. Someone named Romeo had a really bad hair day. Meet Frank Romeo. From what I hear, he lived, or shall I say loved, up to his name. What killed him? He stopped breathing. Does it every time. He stopped breathing because of something in here. A hairspray? Mixed with something toxic enough to kill him. But only our hairdresser knows for sure. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Did you check all the other cans? This was the only one tampered with. It was in Romeo's private office. <coughs> You infect the witnesses. I'll look into his office. It was murder, wasn't it? Who are you? I tried to warn him, but he just wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen to what, Miss... Uh... Sexton. Lydia Sexton. I'm one of Romeo's clients and a, a psychic. Then you probably know my next question. I don't know who killed him, but I may be able to give you a, a place to start. I feel... I feel anger, hatred. I see a house, Romeo's house, and lots of pages blowing in the wind. What kind of pages? I can't tell, but they feel important. And I see you and I having dinner at Chasen's. I'm sorry. Sometimes my hunger interferes with my powers. Uh, don't you just hate when that happens? But I am free for dinner. Dad. Romeo didn't lock his office so anybody had access to the hairspray. Gesundheit. Don't ask. If I can do anything else to help, Chief, Oh, you get hungry. Give me a call. Thank you. Did Romeo have any enemies? Well, women loved him, but their husbands and boyfriends were another story. We'll need a list of Romeo's clients. You got it. But considering this guy's reputation, I'd much rather have a look at his little black book. Well, I haven't seen it here. Wait a minute. Book? Pages? Do you have Romeo's home address? Stowed Canyon. Next up, Casa Romeo. This guy either has a great maid or he's a neat freak. Dad, Romeo's appointment book. Not much time for quiet reflection, huh? He was a busy fella. What's this? I've decided that the best way to kill you is to put your head in a vice, shave off your mangy mane, and drill tiny holes through your skull. Anonymous. Yeah. You're looking for someone with a lot of unresolved anger and access to power tools. Dad, there's a note in the fax machine. How dare you? Did you really think I wouldn't find out? You left me no choice. This one's signed. M. Different handwriting. Yeah. Well, at least we know two people who wanted him dead. <laughs> if these walls could talk. Well, they can't. But maybe this can. Must be a couple hundred names in here. Yeah. 
I wonder how many listed under Emma. Oh, she's beautiful. I wonder who she is. Yeah. Must be at least a couple of dozen entries under M. We don't know if M is the first or last name. shot when he was killed. Well, you should have stayed there. Oh, I couldn't. Why not? None of your business. In a murder investigation, everything is our business. Do you mind? Oh. You don't seem the type to do nude pictures. Well, they were Romeo's idea. He said no one would ever see them, so well, I was just trying to make sure that no one ever did. The last thing I need is nude pictures splashed across the headlines as part of Romeo's harem. Not to mention as a murder suspect. Oh, you can't be serious. Oh, I loved him. Look, I know that there were lots of other women, but I was the only one that you really loved. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Bentley, I'm afraid we have to arrest you for breaking and entering. Oh, I didn't break in. I got a key. And I didn't kill him. Thank you. Any idea who wrote this? M. Mm. No. This? Drill tiny hole. Oh, um, uh, I know, um, Gilbert Green. Who is Gilbert Green? Well, he's this crazy inventor that was always threatening Romeo. Like, with the phone calls and letters, Romeo never took him seriously. Let me guess. This has something to do with Gilbert Green's wife. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Oh. Why am I not surprised? Gilbert Green, police. We'd like to talk to you about Frank Romeo. Oh, sniveling coward finally called the police, huh? He didn't call anyone. He's dead. No. No, no, that can't be. Tell me that it's a joke. No joke. Did he suffer? We don't think so. See, whatever happened to justice? He was supposed to die a slow death. He was supposed to suffer like I have suffered. What exactly did he do, Mr. Greed? But you didn't see him on the Regis and Kathy Lee show? Excuse me? The Regis Feldman, Kathy Lee Gifford show. My wife, Penny, sweet, shy, lovely lady. She goes on that show, and then Romeo gives her a complete makeover. He does her hair, he does her nails, he does her makeup, everything. So? So then she has a new hairdo, she thinks she's Sharon Stone. She drops 20 pounds, and she looks like Sharon Stone. But here's the problem, because I still look like Gilbert Green. And then she dumps me, and she runs off with some playboy to Monte Carlo. So, you plotted your revenge. Do you know how many ways there are to kill someone? Too many. There are guns, knives, gas, poison, strangulation, drowning, electrocution. Believe me, I considered all of them. But then I didn't want him to simply die. I wanted him to linger in excruciating pain. How was he killed? Gas. Some kind of poison gas in his hairspray. Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, well, I guess I'll uh, not have to bother finishing this. What is it? It's going to be a bomb for Romeo's Jag. But it wasn't going to be big enough to kill him, mind you. No, but he would have lost a leg. And he would have bled a lot. It's Lily. We may have to ask you some more questions, Mr. Green. Don't blow town. Oh, no. Would miss the funeral for anything. Romeo was killed by a concentrated mixture of ammonia and peroxidase. The gas caused pulmonary edema, which triggered a heart attack. How'd the killer get the ammonia and the peroxidase into the aerosol can? Oh, must have injected it in through the nozzle. I read a preliminary list of suspects through the computer. Looks like our psychic Fred Lydia Sexton had a record. She did three and a half years for attempted murder. Who did she try to kill? Frank Romeo. Bye-bye.
occupying my side. I have an intensive training program. I see all of my private clients in here. I knew you'd be coming to see me. Did you? I had a vision. You and I, hand in hand, on a tropical moonlit beach. I had a vision, too. I saw a man wearing a black robe. He said, Lydia Sexton, I hereby sentence you to three and a half years in state prison. Not funny. Neither is attempted murder. I didn't try to kill him. Ten years ago, Romeo and I had a beauty shop together in New Orleans. We were engaged. I caught him making love to my best friend and lost it. I went after him with a pair of scissors. I only wanted to scare him, but he turned into me and I accidentally stabbed him. Fourteen times. It was a bad accident and a bad mistake. I paid my dues. In a strange way, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Prison. What happened to me in prison? I was standing on a ladder, cleaning the windows. I fell and landed on my head. When I came to, I had a very big headache. And the gift. Don't tell me. You could see the future. When I was released, I came out here to find Romeo and apologize. Not only did he forgive me, but he helped me get my business off the ground. You were lovers? Yes. Oh, I know there were lots of others, but I was the only one he ever truly loved. I wasn't jealous. I owe everything to Romeo. Why would I kill him? I didn't say you did. I'm just not sure you didn't. What are you saying, Amos? That I'm a suspect? You read my mind. Did you put the eucalyptus in the humidifier? Yes, Dad. Ancient Chinese coal remedy guaranteed to work. What is it? Porcupine quills dipped in an oil of clove. You expect me to eat porcupine quills, Henry? Of course not. I'm going to insert them under your fingernails. Tomorrow your cold will be gone. Along with your fingernails. Look, what you need is a hot shower, followed by a cold swim, followed by another hot shower, and it'll knock the cold right out. And replace it with pneumonia, Dad. There's a cure for pneumonia. Dad, did you ever hear of herbal legend vitamins? Vitamins alone will not knock the cold out. I know, no, I know. I... Romeo was marketing a hair care product, Mediterranean Crow, with a company called Herbal Legend. Mm -hmm. It's run by Jude w Ward. <coughs> you finished? Yeah. June Ward. Her name sounds familiar. She's married to Tony Ward, the ex-football player. She's at Robio's book, Four Stars. Four Stars? I found a copy of the agreement at Robio's desk. Robio and Jude Ward were 50-50 partners in Mediterranean Curl. But now that he's dead, she gets the whole enchilada. Hot chili tea. That'll clear you up. I'll be right back. Any luck finding the mysterious Ms. M? Well, there were 38 first or last names in Robio's black book, beginning with the letter M. I pulled all their phone records, then I checked to see if anybody called Robio's fax line. One person did. Barbara Pierce. She's a wealthy socialite. I know who she is. We worked on a lot of charity events together. You sure this fax came from Marva Pierce? I'm sure it was sent from her house. I better drop in on my old friend Marv in the morning. And uh, why don't you make a new friend? Ms. Uh, Forstyle? June Ward? Hi, I'm Peter Burke, homicide. Oh, well, you certainly don't look like a homicide detective. What's a homicide detective supposed to look like? Oh, I don't know. Um, older guy, rumpled suit, bloodshot eyes, trench coat. Hmm. Maybe I should start considering a life of crime. I need to ask you some questions about your business relationship with Romeo. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Alas, poor Yorick, did you know him well? Romeo, that is. This could be fun. Fun's over. That's all the Shakespeare I know now about Romeo. Oh, um, well, we were partners in a hair care product. Mediterranean Curl. Right. He developed it, but he had no idea how to market it. 
I had the means, I had the know-how. Now you have the product all to yourself. Oh, come on, detective, you're not really insinuating I killed him. I know you were sleeping with him. Oh, honey, I sleep with lots of men. My detective, you seem a little tense. No. Ooh, you know, you feel a little tense. Yoga is just wonderful for releasing tension. I'm sorry, Tony. I'm a fan. I know about your bad knee. And he's a cop, dummy. I'm investigating the murder of Romeo. You didn't do something stupid now, did you? Besides marrying you, do you know Romeo, Mr. Ward? I knew him. Well, how did you feel about your wife at Ro Romeo's partnership? Very diplomatic, detective. I knew he was sleeping with her, and it drove me crazy. Crazy enough to kill? Yeah. But I didn't. Look. Tony may be many things, but he is honest. Which is more than I can say for her. She tell you she didn't do it? As a matter of fact, no. Well, I didn't kill him. You believe her? Suspects may say what they want, but the facts speak for themselves. Shakespeare. Burke's Law. Oh, right on time, Chief. I told Marva to be expecting you. That's very considerate of you, Miss Sexton. Any new psychic insights to Romeo's murder? As a matter of fact, I spoke with Romeo in a dream last night. He was in heaven, entirely at peace. Oh, his hair looked wonderful. Oh, so does yours. Did he happen to tell you who sent him to heaven? I asked him that, of course. All he said was, read the good book. It's all in the book. In the book. Mm. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, be gentle with her, Chief. She's having a horrible migraine. Maybe her conscience is bothering her. Hello, Marva. How are you? Oh, Amos. Amos, forgive me for not getting up, but... but I am walking through a wooded glen in Vermont. It's October and the trees are turning, but, but it's still warm. I hear about Romeo. Oh, poor man. I know you were lovers. Oh, Amos, if you are trying to shock me, you have to do better than that. All right. You're a suspect in this murder. Now, why on earth would I want to kill Romeo? You tell me. There's facts. Did you really think I wouldn't find out? You've left me no choice. M. What happened, Marva? Did you find out about his other lovers? Oh, <laughs> I knew that Romeo had other women, but I am the one he really loved. Why the facts? Romeo always asked me about the different businesses I own. At first, I thought it was just idle curiosity. Then I found out that he sold the information to a stockbroker. Insider trading. Well, you can see that I had no choice. I had to end our relationship. Well, the question is, how far did you go to end it? Amos, the only killing I ever did was in the stock market, darling. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, hello, Chief Burke. Have we met? Oh, well, it's Andrea. Oh, my God, Marva's daughter. You've sure grown up. I wouldn't have recognized you. The fact is, I didn't when I saw your picture in Romeo's apartment. You're, uh, wondering what I was doing with a man twice my age? Yeah. Maybe. Well, uh, he was charming and funny, very sexy. And he treated me like a woman. Does your mother know about you and Romeo? No. But I've thought about telling her, just to make her crazy. What do you think she'd do about it? Probably kill me. Maybe she already knows. And killed him. I 
I saw it when you came in. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you find anything? Well, just files and duplicate of files. Oh, yeah. Romeo made copies of everything. Sometimes even copies of copies. He was, uh, you know, impulsive. You mean compulsive? Yeah, that too. Sort of scared me. Why? Well, I wasn't sure if I could live up to such a high standard after we were married. Married? I didn't even know you and Romeo were engaged. Yeah. It wasn't formal or anything, but we were going to do it as soon as he finished his book. What book? His biography. You mean autobiography? Yeah. <laughs> he was working on it every chance he got. I haven't found any book. Well, that's because it's on his computer at home. Here's the problem right here, miss. I told you it wasn't the washing machine, didn't I? It's never the machine. Well, what is it? A syringe. Got jammed up in the drum. Wait a second, I'll take that. Drop it in the bag, please. I think you just gave our investigation a little shot in the arm. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, Lily. What'd you find in the syringe? What do you mean, what did I find? You just gave me the syringe an hour ago. What's the good of all that new equipment if it can't give us fast answers? Well, science takes time, Chief. You'll have your answers tomorrow morning. 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock. You always have to have the last word, don't you? Yes, we're at Romeo's house if you need us. Goodbye. Romeo was writing his book on this computer. Someone's beaten us to it. How can you tell? The hard drive's totally fragged. Speak English. The computer's entire memory system has been erased. His book's gone. In other words, Romeo's dead. And so are we. Your father is very worried. Fathers worry about their sons. Vidi, I'm fine. Oh, sure. You're stuffed up. You're sneezing. You're fine. What's all this stuff? It's a cure. And you have a fever, my friend. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Just like Florence Knighton. What's her name? Gail. I'm just in time. For what? Hey, right here. Oysters on the half shell. Tabasco. What? Food cures. What? Listen to this. Kelp. For protein, kelp is? Seaweed. Excellent. Are you on vacation? Look at this. A burger. Oh, thank God. A burger made completely with plankton. Plankton? Yes, you never saw a whale with a head cold. Right, Ramon? Forget about it. What am I talking to you for? Marge. All right, all right, just leave it, Vinny. But I'm not shooting up. I don't care what's in that thing. Chicken soup. A chicken soup IV. Okay, you missed my infomercial. You're a busy man. I forgive you. Vinny's chicken soup IV. Stick it in your vein, or for the weak at heart, simply use the optional straw. All you have to do is heat the bag, three minutes in a microwave oven. Take it with you. No fuss, no muss. The coal is gone, guaranteed. Two weeks. Biddy, coals are always good with it. Two weeks. I know. I don't want to make any promises I can't keep. Petey, you have a fever. Take the soup, take the aspirin. What's it going to hurry? Call me in the morning. Ramon, what are you standing there like a lox? Can you see this man is sick? Vamanos! God bless me. Oh, hey, miss, I did the best I could. Dad, Vinny's losing in a chicken soup IV. Can you believe this? Believe it? I paid a fortune for Vinny's house call. Now drink. You kidding? Go ahead. No. Oh. Any luck with Romeo's computer? Lily and I tried to recover the disc, but couldn't. And I couldn't find a hard copy of his book anywhere either. I tried his office, his house, nothing. My luck was better. I did some checking on the Herbal Legend Corporation. Jude Ward's company. Mm-hmm. There's a rumor circulating a class action suit's about to be filed over Romeo's Mediterranean curl. Does it work? Oh, it curls the hair all right, but if you leave it in even one minute too long, the hair falls out. A suit like that could bankrupt his company. Sounds like a motive for murder to me. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Miss Ward, Detective Burke is here. Send him in. So tell me, Detective Burke, do you like to touch soft, supple, healthy skin? What happens if I say yes? Well, then you get to try Epidariere, our latest vitamin-enriched moisturizing gel. I don't think so. Oh, come on, don't be shy. 
There's room on the table for two. I'm sure Heather can handle both of us. Well, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to pass. I hate to find out later that Jill makes my hair fall out. Ah, oh, I see you found out about the class action suit. Everything you worked for, you stand to lose because of Romeo. That's true. A very painful experience for all of us. Especially for Romeo. For you've double-checked his formula. Maybe Tony's not as understanding as you are. I told you Tony wouldn't kill anyone. Although I'm not quite so sure about our other partner. Other partner? Our silent partner. The Hungarian millionaire. Marva Pierce. Sure, I think it's important. I just don't think that the connection to Marva Pierce is as important as you do. Dad, Romeo convinced Marva to invest in the hair perm from hell. Now she stands to lose millions. I mean, not to mention, Romeo was sleeping with Marva's daughter. If Marva knew that Romeo was sleeping with Andrea. How do we find out? Well, it'll cost us $2.95, but I think it's worth it. One, five, 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 Psychic. Lady Sexton, please. This is Chief Burke. Edward, you dud. Ask her when my call's gonna go away. Hello, Chief. I know you're expecting my call. And I know what you're going to say. Eight o'clock at Chase, and so will be fine. Well, actually, I was calling you about Marva Pierce. Well, nobody's perfect. I was the one who told Bert and Lonnie their marriage would last forever. Did Marva Pierce know that Romeo is seeing her daughter? Chief, you know it's completely unethical for me to reveal anything personal about my clients. Lydia, you're not a doctor or a lawyer. You're a psychic. I said it was unethical. I didn't say I wouldn't tell you. As a matter of fact, Marva found out about it only a few days before Romeo was killed. Well, how'd she find out? I told her. Well, she'd been sensing something was terribly wrong with her daughter, and I felt if she could confront the truth, it would reestablish her psychic equilibrium. Did I do something wrong? I don't know yet, but thanks for your help. Gesundheit. <laughs> All right, so she knew. I put the syringe and needle through every test in the book. Nothing. No prints, no sign of ammonia, peroxidase. The washing machine ran long enough to rinse them out. Well, it was worth a shot. But I didn't give up that easily. I went back to Romeo's shop and took the towels that were being washed. Guess what I found embedded in some of the fibers? Traces of ammonia and peroxidase. And traces of another chemical. Imatrix. What's that? A medication for migraine headaches. I cross-checked the list of prescriptions against everyone involved in the investigation. I know. Marva Biz. Next time, listen to me. I am not going to discuss my daughter and Romeo with you or anybody else. How did you feel when you found out? Oh, how do you think I felt? Betrayed by the daughter who doesn't love me and furious at the man who I thought I could trust. And that's really why you sent the facts? Yes. Why did you lie to me? I wasn't going to tell you that my daughter was sleeping with my lover. So you killed him? No. Then how did your syringe get into Romeo's shop? I don't know. I do. I left it there. I killed Romeo. He told me he loved me. That he would stop seeing all those other women. That he would stop seeing my mother. But he was lying. He was just telling me what I wanted to hear. But why kill him? Because I wasn't gonna let him get away with it. Get away with what? Breaking my heart. All right. Tell me exactly how you did it. No. Look, I'm not saying anything more until I see a lawyer. I only want to help you, Andrea. I know my rights. Not another word. You can take her. Well? I don't know. You don't believe she killed him? No. If she's trying to cover for her mother, I don't understand why Marva didn't come forward to protect her daughter. Maybe she didn't do it either. Come with me. Dad, you remember Mr. Greed? Gilbert Green. Huh. 
I heard on the radio that you made an arrest in the Romeo case. Andrea Pierce. That's right. That's wrong. She didn't do it. I wasn't quite honest with you the other day. Why not? Well, because I didn't want you to catch the killer. Thought he'd done the world a favor. But then I couldn't let an innocent girl go to jail. So, what is it you didn't tell me? The night before Romeo was killed, I was watching his shop with one of my new inventions, high-definition night scope. Why? Because that's the way I was spending my time. I was planning, I was researching, I was trying to discover the best and the most painful way to kill him. Anyway, it was 10 o'clock at night. He was working late on a customer. He wasn't doing her air. Who was the customer? The vitamin queen. Jude Ward. That's the one. So, they finished, and then she left, and then a few minutes later, he jumped into his Jaguar, and he drives off, and I was getting ready to follow him, and this Humvee pulls up, and this human mountain gets out, slips around to the back of the shop, the next thing is the alarm goes off, so I took off. And who is driving the Humvee? I'll give you a clue. A football player. Tony Ward. Well, if it isn't Tanya Hardy. How's the knee? Hurts like hell, but it always does. Hand me that red paint. Don't take this the wrong way. But you don't look like the ship-in-the-bottle kind of guy to me, Tony. I'm not. At least I didn't used to be, but... June made me see a shrink about my aggression. He thought this would be good therapy. From what I've seen, I don't think it's working. You should have seen me six months ago, before I started the ship. I've learned discipline, patience, self-control. I hardly ever lose my temper anymore. Voila. Done. <laughs> Quite a thing of beauty. Yeah. Like your wife. What's that supposed to mean? What were you doing at Romeo's salon the night before he was killed? Well, what do you think I was doing? Following your wife. Yeah, well, is that a crime? No, but killing your lover is, Tony. I already told you, I didn't kill him. All I was trying to do was catch him in the act. Then what were you going to do? Break his scrawny neck! Well, there's always needlepoint. Look. The only thing I'm guilty of is breaking into Romeo's shop, and I never really even did that. I disconnected a security alarm, then kicked open the side door. But the son of a bitch had a backup alarm, two-time and creep. So I got out of there. Thanks. You've been a big help. I have? We noticed it ourselves, how clean Romeo kept his house. Member's office, spotless and redundant. There were two of everything. Two brushes, two combs, two alarm systems, two copies of every file. Except the book. Where's the backup copy of his book? So, we're looking for a backup computer disk. Right. But I haven't been able to find it anywhere. It's not here, it's not in his office. Try his car. I looked there, too. It's not there, either. Now, apparently, the killer must have found the backup disk, too. No backup disk. If you can't find what you're looking for, you're looking for the wrong thing. Burke's Law. You still think we're looking for a manuscript? It's possible. I looked for that, too. I've looked everywhere. Wait. You didn't look everywhere, Peter. You didn't look in the printer. of a Beverly Hills hairstylist by Frank Romeo. Round up the suspects, Peter. Tell them they have an appointment at Romeo's Salon. Tony, I'm so glad you're here. There's something important you need to know. I sense some big changes coming. Good advice, Lydia. Someone's about to experience a very big change life in prison. Marva, Andrea didn't kill Romeo. She confessed only to protect you. But I didn't kill him. I know that now. 
And now you know how much your daughter really loves you. Miss Ward, Romeo may have ruined your business, but it was also your lover and friend. You said you didn't blame Romeo. You also didn't kill him. You, on the other hand, blamed Romeo for everything. But you only killed on the playing field. Besides, you get a kick out of June's flirtations, don't you? Without them, you might have to have a real relationship. Rhonda, he promised to marry you. And when it didn't happen, did you air do it, man? I don't think so. You're still in love with him. You're willing to wait until he hung up his spurs. Dad. Or whatever. By the way, Romeo was going to marry you. And soon. Which is why you killed him. What? Yeah, you killed Romeo and tried to frame Marva Pierce. Oh, really, Chief? You stole one of Marva's syringes during one of your visits. He's lying. No, you were lying when you said you had no reason to kill Romeo. You tried to kill him ten years ago and failed. This time you succeeded. Why would I want to kill him? Good question. I didn't know the answer until we found Romeo's book. The book you erased from his computer. The book you thought you had destroyed. But we found a copy. And we found Romeo's backup disc in your house. The disc you took after you erased his computer. Romeo wrote that he was giving him confidential information about his clients. Information that you turned into valuable prophecies and profits. If his book was published, he would have been ruined. You have got it all wrong. I think we can make a case. No, I didn't kill him because of the book. I killed him because of her. Me? He loved you. He wanted to marry you. But that was wrong. That's not the way I saw it at all. I was the one he fell in love with. I was the one he was going to marry. Why, he was going to sell his shop. Forget about all the other women. We were going to build a home in the mountains, a beautiful cottage by a little stream. We were going to spend the rest of our lives together. But then, I got a look at his book. My vision of the future was completely wrong. How could I have been so stupid, so blind? I was never even in Romeo's life. So you decided to end it. I, I never thought I'd get caught. I guess you should have called 1-555-PSYCHIC. I feel terrific. No achy feeling. Gone. Your nose? I can breathe again. Those flowers smell great. Thanks to my porcupine quills. No, I think it was actually Vinny's chicken soup. How about the care and attention of a loving father? It didn't hurt. <laughs> Gesundheit. Gesundheit. I better call Vinny. No, please. It's <laughs> nothing. Porcupine quills coming up, Henry? Just 10 for the fingernails, or how about another 10 for the toenails, too? Ouch! <laughs> And a large bowl of turtle soup coming up for you, Dad. Don't bother, Peter. I'm fine, really. Achoo! You really ought to try the porcupine quills. I'll just stick to the soup. Achoo! <laughs>